Hey guys, thanks for tuning to Alliance Tech. So today I'm working on something kind of uh, different. So it's, it's it's neat. I get to work on different stuff every day. That's why I do what I do, because it's really fun. Um, so today I get to work on this uh, Trillium style BAC condenser. Um, and a couple weeks ago I had a problem with this condenser and uh, most of these Trillium style condensers, this is what the problem they have. They have this problem here. Besides, you know, the fan blades popping off and ruining both your coils um, but uh, this condenser here had a pump that failed on it and it has this little sump pump in it and, we're, and it fell a couple weeks ago on me and I was able to free it up and oil the bearings on it and get it kind of going again so uh, uh, I don't know if it's still running up there but the customer said he didn't have any problems with the hot weather that we had just this last weekend so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pop this new pump in there and get this thing um, back online so check out what this pump comes with it comes with it's kind of cool, cool kit that uh, BAC sends out for these uh, trillium style condensers so you get the you get the pump here itself this is the box here this optimus universal pump kind of a gen air uh, stainless steel pump uh, and here's the pump itself right here so you get the pump here very lightweight 115 volt it even has a 115 volt plug on it you know which would be nice if if they actually supplied an outlet in the condenser and I just plugged into you no but they don't do that they they make you splice this so um, it'd be nicer in the, in the future if they had like the locking style that you know just put it in and it locked um, uh, the plug locked on the other end of it like it's just kind of a cord that came down and locked into this one it had a little boot that goes over it they sell them at Home Depot all the time um, and you can put that in and plug this thing in but look, this thing was just like all this extra cable and stuff so i'll look at the other one see if they ran it or they spliced it uh it's it's factory so it hasn't been replaced before so we're going to be getting into that i will take some electrical connections up there with me uh but other than that uh it comes with this really cool kit here so it comes with uh the manual here uh it was the manual and the manual has everything you need in it um it comes with the parts it comes with here and with that um basically the kit parts id uh introduction um suggested tools all these tools you might need uh a lot, a lot of this stuff doesn't really have to do with the replacing this pump here so um you don't really need all this stuff to do this this is like when you're replacing the coils on the condenser or doing other major work so we're not doing any other kind of major work um with it um, we don't need to seal it. Uh, we don't need to do any of that. We need to reassemble anything. Um, you want to you feather the edges together on taping stuff. It's, we don't need to do any caulking stuff. We don't need to do any of that stuff. So, and here's when it comes to the spray pump replacement. This is what we need to do here. And it has basically the basin here, bottom of the condenser. Uh, how do you open it up? The door's up, and oh, there's everything inside. I have a little sensor here on mine. But um, let's, I'm, I'm just going to unwire real quick and wire back in. So, kind of neat here. It goes through all this stuff. There's your, uh, your flow plate. Make sure you don't lose that. If there's a washer in there, it's supposed to be in there, guys. So, make sure that goes in the new one. Okay? It's very important. Um, and, told you how to take it off, put it back on. There's these straps right here. There's all the parts it comes with. Kind of neat comes with these now. The old one didn't. It came with this one and this one. But uh, you can always use, always use a hose clamp. But I'm glad they supplied a hose clamp. Uh, just in case you have problems, corrosion with the other one. They supplied one. Uh, making it easier for the technicians. I like that. Making it easier for the technicians. It has this little bleed valve. This right here. This is very important, you guys. You guys need to make sure you put this thing back in here when you close your, your lid. Because this, and just crack this thing. Just let it bleed off so you're bringing some fresh water in. If it's recycling that dirty water all the time, you know, your conductivity is going to go through the roof. And you could start fouling up your pads super fast. So you want to make sure that you have this bleed on here. That's why there's no chemical treatment in here. And uh, you, you put this in here. And sometimes you can put some uh, uh, some chlorine tablets in here um, if, you, if you need to or biocides. Just when you're doing a rinse, it's going to drain immediately right after so. I don't stick something too corrosive in there because it will eat the pan. Even though it's stainless steel, chlorine does attack 304 stainless steel. And at some concentrations, it could attack 316 if over if it's overheated. So you want to make sure that you don't do that. 
So if you want a chlorine solution to clean the pads real quick, or you're running a biocide to, to get everything growing on your pads, you know, make sure that you, you put that in, recycle it, and then drain it right back out. So most likely a liquid form out of tablet form. Um, and then, you know, putting it all back together, you should put your, your, uh, your locking screws back in luckily because when the fans kick on full speed sometimes it'll pick these doors up so you want to make sure that those doors are secured down and this is basically when it's done on the inside well obviously we have the cancer all around this so it comes with some electrical uh, schematics as well very very nice you know um but our, our job is pretty super simple I already pumped down the the unit inside and we're going to get it up there and replace this pump and uh so my customer will have the rest of the summer no issues so these condensers have saved my customer a lot of time uh, a lot of money in water uh, the trilliums that's what these things are built for uh, in the winter time they use hardly any water um, my pumps don't really kick on till the set point till the desired set point which i think here is uh at 80 degrees so they will kick on today and it's about about 76 degrees right now um outside so it's gonna get it's gonna start getting hotter uh and we'll probably almost get up into the hundreds today about 98 99 today so um i'm gonna put all this in a bag and get this up here these climb bags are amazing so if you have these climb bags I'm just gonna pop everything in there I'm not going to take the manual, you know, but I will take all this stuff, fun stuff, and uh, I'll, I'll just need my tool bag. That's it. So I'll get some sunglasses on and we'll get up there because it's very, 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 very bright. And we'll knock this out, guys. So I'll see you when I get on the roof. shut down here so I'll shut this off okay guys I have gloves on here kind of neat so Here's a, here's a sensor I was talking about. I don't know if you guys see that, but here's a sensor I was talking about. Here's a little bleed valve. And this here as well. There should be a washer in here. There's all this extra stuff here. And they made the splice like right in here somewhere. So we're gonna we're gonna they looped all this up and down to minimize the cord length, all that stuff. So they're getting fancy with it. Um, we're gonna do the same thing. Factory guys, OEM. Okay. I'll take my gloves. I usually put gloves. Close on me. Okay. There you go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be. Taking, I'll flip, flipping these doors up right here, just like this. This is dry, it's good. And uh, here's the sump. It's gonna say it has these little pins. You can pull the whole basket out to get more leverage on if you want. You just pop, pop the whole basket out while you take that band off. And I already took the band off because I already had that this pump out. And um, 
and uh, took the pump out already to get uh, so it wasn't stuck stuck anymore. So I'll go ahead and uh, just gonna cut all these off here, take all this out, pull the whole sump, the whole pump out. There we go. Fitting supposed to be glued in there, in here, with a barb on it. Um, well, it's not glued, or it was glued, and it came unglued. Uh, we have to get that out of there.
washer in there right there. Leave that in there. See if you're watching this, this uh, this big zip tie that you gave us to, support, to, to clamp the pump back down here isn't the right size. So I got some panduit in my truck. I'll go get my panduit, put it in there. But they're gonna give a kit out, make sure the kit has the proper um, zip ties. And stuff. What's nice about these though is it has a little tab you can pull right back off. Has a little tab on it. Right back out of there, so I'll get the, I'll get a bigger, bigger one. It was it'd be nice if they they sent like like at least four inches longer, but yeah, this isn't gonna work here. So I'll I'll go I'll go down and grab uh which I gotta grab some glue, which I think I have some glue. Move this back in there. You know it's not supposed to slip out of there. It's supposed to be glued in there. So hadn't had any problems yet, but. Keep the pump centered in here, you guys. And this stuff cuts those gloves up. I 
I'm gonna use the, the old hose clamp. I got some truck stock, guys. Got some truck stock now. Splice is the best thing to do. Well, so I'm gonna run that new cable all the way through, uh, like the OEM installation. I was just gonna splice it, but you know, it's it's ran all the way to it, so I gotta take this little cage out, get this little cage out of there, then I get in there because I'm not the smallest guy. So stay tuned. <laughs>
see it gets smaller. Now, the other one they have here, they didn't do. getting smaller so now that's smaller and all that solder runs into the wire that solder in there and that solder runs into the wire and makes a better bond so if you're using these you use a heat gun or a lighter you know see now that bubble is completely it's like gone now so compared to what I did cut off you can see the bubble there I saw the bubbles now gone that solder that runs into the wire, so it makes it a better, better connection. So, but if you're using them, use it. There you go, VAC. Make sure you guys can use these connectors. Use them. You guys didn't use them here. Make sure you use them. I used them here. A lot better. Get this on here now. And I brought some electrical tape up here with me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fancy it up a little bit since it is a splice. You know, they didn't, didn't really protect it. They put zip ties on it. Um, I'm just gonna give it a little extra love here and protect it from the elements a little bit better. I don't think that splice is gonna go anywhere. using them. Perfect. So if you guys are doing, dealing with one of these, they'll run the splice halfway between your condenser so you have to crawl inside to do work on it. They don't, like, it would be nice if they put a plug at this end, because it does have a plug on the, on the, you just plug it in. Maybe in a box or something that clamps over the plug. Something a lot easier to do because you know, it's just time and money for our customers and it doesn't seem like the, you know, BAC cares about our customers very much. Condensers here, 
Uh, they usually, these condensers are usually micro channel condensers. These are not, these are just regular uh, tube style condensers, U bends and stuff on them. I like these, these are nice, they're sturdy, they're strong. Micro channel, you know, they're all right. Uh, a little more, they seem a little more efficient, but um, uh, these are nice. I like these. These are probably gonna last with us for a long, long time. Um, we go ahead and uh, and uh, put the cage back in here. I gotta all these spots here. I gotta get some more zip ties for zip tie back here as well. I'm gonna get some more zip ties for that. Those I use some electrical tape for now. But I'll get some zip ties on there and zip tie that, that together. Uh, so I'm gonna put the cage back in here and um, get this thing going. So Hey guys, let me talk to you a little bit about this condenser while I put it back together. So this condenser has two different parts to it. It has your discharge in, your coil, condensate liquid out, and it has your water over pads, your evaporative cooler side. So it uses air over coil for the condenser and also uses air over pads like a swamp cooler. So the air over the pads <clears throat> will cool the water down depending on your wet bulb temperature, will make it cooler. Um, if the humidity is lower, the higher the humidity, the warmer the water is going to be. Therefore, the warmer the water, the inlet air of the coil will be. So here it's very dry. It's about 17% humidity compared to a place like in Florida or Texas where the humidity is a lot higher. This system wouldn't really work as well as it does out here in a lower humidity climate. So it does get hotter out here, but very low humidity. So this is a perfect unit for this um, system here. Hey, these condenser coils are slightly oversized, therefore the fan speeds are on 15 to 18%. Today, you probably won't see it reach above that because the humidity is so low and the inlet air is just around 65 to 68 degrees blowing right into that coil. It's just a wonderful, beautiful day on the inside of this uh, condenser here. So um, let's get back to the video. back in there. Go ahead and test it. Um, get this thing tested. We're going to flick it all on right now and uh, get this thing in operation. I'll turn the system back on so I'll be back up you guys. Um, notice it says no step but in order to get in there you got to crawl on that thing. Um, I just want you to continuously step on it but there's no way to, you know, that's the way you got to get in there to work on it. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's a step. All right, guys, we're gonna turn the power on here. Take a little while for this system to wake up over here. It's gonna ramp to 100% here, do its thing. While it's starting up, I'll show you. You can hear kind of here ramping up. 
This one here is doing its thing here. This one is, uh, it's wet. So that's nice. So that's, it's above 80 degrees out. So it's, it's working, it's very low fan speed. Right here. Very low fan speed. Very low fan speed. Very nice. So it's doing its thing guys. Beautiful. Okay. This one's uh, outdoor air temp, 80, 85 degrees, so it's above 80, guys. Um, has a conductivity sensor in there, so it measures the conductivity for drain and stuff, but it's uh, pretty good here. So, pressure's 191, R507, uh, 80 degrees, there it is. So, let's go ahead and, uh, it's not gonna turn on right now because, um, uh, I'm not at my pressure set point, so I have, to, I have to be running. So I'm gonna go down and turn the rack on, and then um, I'll be back up. So see you guys soon. Pan, pan's running. Pump's on here. Pads are wet. Let's see what's going on here. So there, there's the water there. There's a little float switch right down here. That's the float switch. Your raises the soil right off, the water rings on and off. Here's your overflow. This is the trickle you want to do. Not not, not that much trickle. You know, you just want to help too much. I have a little bit coming out of there. Just a little bit coming out of there. Just enough to recycle the water in here. So it keeps the debris off the pads or your pads last a long time here. Um, Back on. Um, pump sounds good. It's sensing conductivity, so we're good on that part. Pads are nice and wet. All the pads are wet. Beautiful. Beautiful. So this ring's ready to rock and roll for the summer. Let's see here. Yep. Fan speed's 15%. Look at all that savings, that's great. That's awesome, these are wonderful condensers, great idea. Um, BAC makes a beautiful unit. Uh, they, they look great, they're not the easiest to work on, but there's some things they can do better, like um, you know, putting a plug in for that pump. That'd be, that'd be great. I know they watch my videos, because the last one I made about them. Um, but uh, if they were to make these, you're gonna plug in, or some type of a sealed box that plug did go in. There's really no water in there, it's just, it's dry, so there's no sense of putting a plug in, make it easier, you know. Um, uh, I'm just gonna have these panels relocated on the this side, because the side really comes over, so then uh, the panels are typically on, on the door side. You'll see the panels right here, and um, they sealed all this off. Put them on the other side for me. That's why you see how long those things were. And typically, um, if they're like that, they should put a plug. But, um, but they still should put a plug. The panels right here put a plug right there, so the pump can plug in and out of it, like like a swamp cooler. You know, just basically that's what it is. This is so a swamp cooler with uh, one of those. It's one of those, um, but with these nice pads on it, making things much easier for us. Customer has another little issue on, a, on an exhaust fan over here. So we're gonna go take a look at that. This thing's running top notch right here. So I'm gonna close that panel and uh, move on to the next, next issue here. You know, PMs are great. Customers should take care of them, make sure they're running. I can't really show you the racks inside. It's a redundant rack, it's two compressors, one to sit in standby. Uh, freezer sits at minus 40. Um, uh, but uh, we can't go in there's my customers products all around he has boxes and stuff and that's a lot of editing I got to do so to let you know they're pitcher screws there's two of them uh, they run off the 201 cards the original uh, the uh, compressor controllers and it runs off the Dixel thermostat that the customer can log in and out of um, the system's basically simple the solenoid thermostat does the solenoid and also does the defrost, the defrost heaters. Um, that's it, he has a problem with that exhaust fan over there. 
we're gonna go take a look at that exhaust fan. So let's put this back in here. Being an industrial tech, you know, you gotta do a lot of stuff. It's just not always the biggest industrial equipment out there, but uh, it's fun. You know, you can work on some fun stuff. So, yeah, if this is not working, they all should be on right now. So. I'm gonna put you guys in. Strap here. a bad belt so there's a switch right over there okay this thing spins, spins freely so let's go get a new belt My grease gun up here, I'll grease those. Those there as well, so. A44. Sweet. All right, guys. I'll see you back up here. All right, guys, so here's the Unit here, I got a couple other units here that are not working so good, so I got a couple extra builds. Uh, got my grease gun. Wipe off the, the zerk fitting here. fitting here it looks pretty good so locks on there boom don't have to worry about it um, I need a battery there we go there she is That's all nice and greased up. A little bit of grease on there. I like leaving the grease on there. Kind of protects the fitting a little bit um, for corrosion. So, uh,
a lot of can move fitting. Uh, I got it on like Amazon for like 20, 30 bucks, something like that. Uh, lock and loop. Very nice, fit right on here. So it goes right, it fits right inside there like that. It clips right on. There you go. So let's get this belt there. Oops. good we had a little tiny belt so let's let that slow down something on this one here is uh there's an issue with the belt, so um, I'll check the sheath. The sheath is too worn out. Um, I'll have a new belt on there, and uh, I'll replace the sheaths. After, let me 
check this one. Let's slow down here a little bit. I think I have like one or two more belts downstairs. I'm going to replace this one here as well, the belt on this one. Look at these two here, and uh, I don't think you guys need to see me do all four of them, so I'll see you guys back down in the van.
All right, guys, I'm back in the van. Uh, I just drinking some water. I have um, all four of those exhaust fans up and operational. Grease the bearings, replace the belts. Uh, looks, they look good. The sheaves look all right. Uh, I'll probably replace them this winter uh, before the next summer. Uh, but overall, today went well. Replaced that pump on the condenser there. It's a pretty small pump. Um, kind of sucks the way they ran the, the wiring and had they had the splice like way up in the middle there. Uh, so just re-splice it where they did and uh, put it all back online. So there's um, put all, put put those extra zip ties on there. They were uh, where I tape we use the tape to hold it together. The zip ties over those so the tape doesn't come undone. Um, uh, yeah, it looks good. So uh, make sure you check the, the drains on these things. Make sure the valves are opening. Make sure the water fill solenoid's working. Uh, make sure the float works. And uh, and, uh, and you can set timers and stuff on that so you can uh, delay fill, delay drain, all that stuff. Um, and they run well. I don't really have to work on them that much. But like you saw in my last video on the BAC Trillium style condensers, um, the fan fell off and destroyed uh, the coils here. Um, and I'm going to be putting those those same brackets on here um, on these fans uh, just to protect them from you know future future failure. Uh, so I already got the material. I just gotta come and put those on on another PM time. You just cut them, cut them the length, and zip them in. You know, protect your coils. Uh, when you're up there and the customer asks you, you know, it's summertime, and you guys are up there making sure that everything's going. Uh, according to the plan, you don't, you don't want to be back high heat summertime up on a roof all day long because something you neglected to do or didn't or just didn't really know what you could do. Uh, like those exhaust fans up there. I mean, typically I don't really work on exhaust fans, but the customer asked me to take a look at them. So I was here, I was up on the roof. I took a look at them and, and we got them up. He had the belts here on stock. So replaced all the belts, greased the shafts, uh, greased the bearings, and they're back online. Uh, just do your due diligence out there. Um, just don't be tunnel vision when you go up there. Look around. Pick up the roof if you're up there. Um, make sure it's clean. Uh, just it, makes, it puts a good name out there for yourself and the company that you work for. So um, thanks again for tuning in, you guys. And I'll see you on the next one.